Well, let's see. I said whatever this something is could be replaced with omega squared. Check it out. This something, in this case, the something that multiplies our x is k over m. So if I know k and I know omega, I can get m. But I don't know omega. I know period. So why don't I get omega from that period? Well, in this case, the period is 1 second, so omega is just 2 pi. OK, well, now I know that omega squared, 2 pi squared, is equal to k over m, 50 over m. Well, all I have to do now is solve this equation for m. And when I do, I find that I need a mass of 1.27 kilograms. So, OK, this was a little tricky. The takeaway I want you to remember is that anytime you can write your force like this, acceleration equals negative something times x, well, you're going to get simple harmonic motion. That's really incredible. Not only that, whatever this something is, that will be the square of your angular frequency. Now, that's really cool. But unfortunately, all this stuff we've learned about springs, well, springs weren't how they made the first clocks or the first chronometers. Well, there was one day when our good friend Galileo, while sitting in a church, saw something that blew his mind and would forever change navigation. Let's talk to Cheered Bucker again to see what Galileo found. Well, it's a rumor or an anecdote, or however you want to call it. Galileo was sitting in this church and sees the candelier swinging from left to right. And he uh, checked it with his pulse to see if it, if it kept an accurate rate. And due to counting to those two, he found out that there was an equal line in oscillation, uh, an isochronism in the pendulum, in the swinging of the candeliers. And that's how the pendulum started life, really.